Also, thank you, Caitlin Knight said 90K. Yeah, thank you guys for the 90K subscribers. Let's get to 100K this year. I have a feeling it's gonna happen. With that said, we're watching Kidology. If you guys did not see, I already covered this in another part. Lots of you watched that video, lots of comments. I think some of us could really relate to her story and her dilemma with making this very toxic friend, but also why is Kid in this situation in the first place? We have been watching Kidology's story on the internet for a while now. I've collabed with her. The last conversation I had with her was so good. But more than that, I think what I love about Kid is watching her grow. I am the hardest on Kidology. You want to know how strong Kidology is? I go so hard on her and she just understands and really processes it and like doesn't back down. She is an incredibly strong person who's in a very interesting and sort of a very complicated era of her life. But I have never seen somebody take criticisms from me so well, this girl is a champ. She is so strong and I, you know, am not surprised. So don't underestimate her. She truly is a very strong person. Now, with that said, she's in a very interesting era of her life and let's see how she handles this one. So she made a toxic friend. It went very toxic. You can watch my last video on that. And here's the aftermath. The title is called The Ultimate Emotional Manipulation and Stalking Part 2. She had the words, baby reindeer on this thumbnail. And I told you I got stalker vibes from this guy. Maybe it's light stalker vibes, but it's there, okay? And I'm very excited to see this update. You guys in the chat already, you're already amping me up. You're saying it's good, I'm stoked, okay. Salutations and welcome to, well, I guess this is part two of my video about my horrifying and bizarre experience. I would just like to sincerely thank everybody who watched my last video. I was reading the comments this morning and it brought me to tears. I did not realize how common an experience this was for so many people, not just for women, but for men and other individuals as well. It was heartwarming to know that other people understood what I was going through. And it was also so revelatory. Sure. To this was very relatable in my 20s. I've made very similar friends and sometimes lovers. Okay. So. See what I had actually gone through when what? I- What? Ingrid says you're in the video, by the way. Um, <laughs> what? I'm in this video? Oh, I thought you meant I was in this video like on screen. I was like, I know, but oh, okay, am I in this video? Oh my God, hi, let's go. I watched through my video and actually realizing what had happened to me. It has been a very stressful time, I must admit. And I don't think I realized how serious some of what was happening to me actually was. I don't think I realized how serious potentially going on holiday could have been. And I really thank all of you for your comments and for your messages of kindness and concern. I really appreciate it so, so much. I also do want to apologize for being so, I guess, I think in this video, just editing it right now, I come across as quite stiff, I think. And I do apologize for that. I've just been quite stressed over the past few days. And I'm sure that will become clear when you actually watch the video and what has happened in the past few days. So. Yes, I do want to apologize for that. I am okay. And I do thank you so very much for your understanding. Now, let's get into the video. Oh my God, it's Before dark. we start this video, I just need to make Whoa. one thing. Whoa, yo, very, very this green color is her color. Is this like a blue? Is it her shoulders? Have we ever seen Kidology's shoulders? I can say this, I'm gay. Look at her shoulders. Have we ever seen Kidology's shoulders? Because they are shouldering. What is even happening? This is a look. Very clear. The last time I was ever in contact with Lachlan was on May 31st when I sent him an email, which for me was basically putting my foot down for the first time ever. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, re Lachlan, please watch this video. This video will give you all the context and the information for what I'm gonna be talking about in this video, about what has transpired since I posted that video, which is a perfect instance of, I would call it emotional manipulation, if not emotional in this email, I basically debunked all of his claims that I had strongly reciprocated his feelings and that I was sleeping around with Yorkshiremen, as he put it. The essence of the email isn't important, but what is important is how I ended that email. Please, for once, respect my wishes and don't contact me again. Now, I don't know if this just doesn't hit, and I know that Lachlan, just based on some of the comments I've been getting, is not the only person who thinks that what he did and what he has continued to do is perfectly viable and normal. If somebody says that they do not want you to contact them ever again, and not just says it, but says it in bold. Do not contact them ever again. Ever. Since telling Lachlan to never contact me again, he has written me not one, not two, but seven emails. He also Ooh. did a hell lot more than that, and we will get into that momentarily. Seven. But not only did Lachlan send me seven emails when I told him to never contact me again, he also made a fake Gmail account under the name Lachlan K. We know this because I read this shit on stream, yo. He be crazy. That's what I'm saying. A healthy and centered person is not going to do this to you. FYI, I'm going to be very high energy Brittany throughout this reaction because we are spilling the tea today, guys. Tea emoji in the chat. But I think what's mostly important here 
is that I have dealt with enough people like this before. A healthy person who truly is sorry doesn't make a fake Google account and write a fake, like basically he shared the email that he should have just written to kid for us. We didn't need to see that. That tells me he's not really sorry. You're not really sorry if you have to apologize to anyone, the person, you know, you need to apologize to her, not to us. We don't know who you are. Lachlan is a fake name. We do not know who he is. She did not share who he is. And commented at least 11 times on my video. Now, as of today, he, that is Lachlan, not me, because I never delete comments. I've never deleted a comment on my channel in my life. But Lachlan has deleted the 11 comments that he left on my channel under the account Jeez. and the name Lachlan K. I can hazard why he deleted those comments mainly because of the contents of the emails that he sent me subsequently. Honestly, I should have screenshotted all the comments that he was making and responding to before he deleted it, but I was, in all honesty, just so stunned that this man had gone out of his way to not only create a fake Gmail account under the name Lachlan K, but was mm -hmm. still watching my content and still following my social media. And we will get into that because I think that this is a very important lesson on parasociality and parasocial relationships. Now, just before we get into these mm. lovely lovely emails, I do want to clear something up that I think is very important. I find it very interesting that I relayed my experiences of somebody countlessly violating my boundaries. And yet I got several comments of people upset with me for seemingly violating Lachlan's boundaries. The example that these comments gave of me violating Lachlan's boundaries was my using his real name. Now, I don't blame these commenters for believing that I had used Lachlan's real name based on the fact that Lachlan, and I need to emphasize this, Lachlan is not this person's real name. It is a fake name that I made for the purpose of this video because of how much I value anonymizing people mm. who I talk about in my content. If I didn't value Lachlan's boundaries, I would have never given him a fake name. I would have told you his age. I would have told you his ethnicity. I would have told you what major British city he lives in. Mm -hmm, I would have mm -hmm. told you personal things that he told me in confidence mm -hmm. that I would never have dreamed of putting on the internet or sharing to anyone, even in my personal life. And as I said, I don't blame these commenters for thinking that Lachlan was his real name because of the fact that Lachlan decided to go out of his Way to create a fake email account called Lachlan K mm -hmm. and opened his first comment by saying Lachlan here. He didn't bother to dispel or to clarify that his name wasn't actually Lachlan. Now, I've always said I never have a problem with anybody commenting on my videos, but if you're going to use the anonymized name that I gave you and you are going to use it in a comment where you put forward on your own volition personal information about yourself that I have not even divulged to a living soul, mm -hmm. that is your choice and your prerogative, but it is also your prerogative and it is important for you to clarify to people that you aren't actually Lachlan, that that isn't actually your name. Because now people think that I violated this person's boundaries, that I've doxed them when that is not the case at all. In short, I completely anonymized Lachlan. I made sure, crucially made sure, that no identifying information was put out there about this person. Not one person knows who Lachlan is. The only people who allegedly know who Lachlan in my video is are people who Lachlan himself decided to tell that it was him. He made that choice and that the way they tell on themselves, that's the irony, bro. She kept you anonymous. The way people tell on themselves, though, like that's what's so f***ing crazy about it. That's the insanity point. It's like they out themselves. Baby Reindeer outed herself. Nobody outed you. You could have denied it. Even if the internet allegedly found her like she claimed and said like they outed her, you, you didn't have to confirm it. You're the one who confirmed it. You're the one who's saying, yes, I am the stalker. That's why I know it's like stalker, kind of stalker light or stalkerish. Cause you know, the stalker did the same thing. We're like, when I reference the stalker, I'm not trying to promote the stalker, but the stalker loves taking credit for being the stalker because it's like a, it's like a mental health issue, obviously. But that's what's so dangerous about it. A reasonable person doesn't do this. So when you're dealing with an unreasonable person, that's why you get scared because now you don't know how to predict their behavior because if it's a reasonable person, at least we can kind of predict their behavior. It's his choice and his responsibility. And we will get into that. Secondly, I would like to also make this crucial distinction between two forms of content that I don't think people are readily appreciating when it comes to individuals like myself, that is content creators, talking about our personal experiences, talking about things that have happened to us, something that has regrettably, I think, been termed oversharing in order to try and primarily, I think, shame women from talking about their personal experiences online. I would like to make the distinction between A, me talking about my personal experiences with Lachlan and B, me talking about Mimi says what's a stalker do we have the definition what are the boundaries okay it's going to change everywhere but a stalker I think ultimately is a person 
who against your consent makes every attempt to cross boundaries in order to be closer to you, regardless if you want them to or not. I'm gonna say that's a stalker. And I'm gonna say a lot of 80s films got a lot of stalkery men showing up to your windows with a boom box. Okay, I said what I said. I think it's very important to consider all of my personal videos or the videos that I make about myself as being a kind of audio memoir. My video about my bizarre and horrifying experience was about my experience, which is why I included primarily information about what I was personally going through with my mental health, what I was going through in my personal life, what I was thinking about the situation, what mistakes and errors I thought I made in this relationship. I am completely valid and completely entitled to talk about my experiences on my platform. And because I am a human being living in society, inevitably my experiences are going to involve other individuals and other people. It is my responsibility if I decide to make content about myself, about my experiences, to be as respectful as I possibly can to people. And the way that you do that is by, most importantly, anonymizing people people by making sure that you don't dox them, as is a very important thing not to do on the internet. Mm -hmm. This is very Agreed. different from me making a video about Lachlan, from me making a video trashing him as he called it in one of the emails. She didn't make a video about Lachlan, she made a video about herself. She did everything possible to let this man be anonymous. He's the one looking for attention, period that we are going to go through. Just remember, Lachlan and people like Lachlan will always make things that are your experience, that are things that happen to you, about them. They yep. cannot humanize you. They cannot humanize what you have gone through. Everything is from their view. Everything is an affront to them. Is something happening to them. Just like me telling Lachlan about wanting to unalive myself or me telling Lachlan about being separate it resulted in him telling me that he wanted to be the one to save me, that he wanted to be the one to be a compassionate lover to me. Me making this video about my experiences of a male-female friendship resulted in this individual contacting me to tell me that I had been trashing him about all the problems that my video was now causing him. We are going to- Okay, hold on. I get into how this is emotional manipulation and emotional 101. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said- Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to say this because this is what we do on my channel. And this is not about victim blaming, victim blaming Z. This is about the responsibility we have in our life, not for how other people treat us, because he's 100% for how we're responsible. He's 100% responsible for how he treated her, but how we treat ourselves and what we end up signaling to the world because of how we treat ourselves. Z has signaled through her content for a long time that she is helpless, that she is lonely, that she wants attention that she needs romantic sexual attention and that she's not finding it in the select group that she's most interested in, which sends in signals to the wrong people, which is, again, her right to tell her story, to the wrong people, the white knights, this is why I don't like people who have savior complexes, to come in and save the girl. This is not a thing that Z did and now she deserves a Lachlan. This is what the path of introspection is about. What am I doing in my own life that is bringing these people into my life. Karma is not you do good, you get good. Karma is your life reflected back to you. So Z's karma, her life, this is what she's been given, is a reflection of her. The world's a reflection of us as a whole, guys. You can point fingers all you want about how the world is horrible, but how are we contributing to our world being reflected back to us in a negative way? This is the moment that I see a real change in Z, a real self-awareness of like, okay, this is important. I think I need to change. And she's been working on it for so long. And it takes, I mean, I always say I was like 30 until it really clicked in my brain, you know, where I was like, oh shit, I got to get my life together in like a real profound way, like significantly changed my life. I was always good at working. I was always good at friends. I was always good at a lot of things, but something was deeply missing in me. Kid is an educated person. She's educated. She's traveled, she's thoughtful, she's, you know, she has a life. So this is the first time, and I can't wait for this update because this is the first time I've seen her really have a life lesson slap her in the face and it seems like there's a change in her. So I'm excited to see where that change has gone. But remember, it's not about blaming people. I don't want to victim blame, but I want to say like the way we treat ourselves, you know, even using Tana as an example, Tana has a very typical story of a young girl abused and abandoned by parents which leads her into the arms of older men for validation. It's a very normal story for that type of a girl. It's not good. She's a victim, right? She's a victim of her parents. She's a victim of the world. She's a victim of those men. And once she realizes like, I'm so unhealthy that I think so little of myself, that I'm seeking validation from grownups, that I am putting myself in these situations 
Because there is a difference between being targeted and groomed by an adult for many years and being in situations where you, because I'm so mature for my age, I'm having sex with grownups, which is a very common experience for a lot of girls in that bubble. Okay. So for a lot of people, you know, you have to figure out who are you are, who are you are, who are you in the story? How's it going to manifest? Maybe you're the person who has the same story as Tana, but you go full celibate and never have sex until you're 50. That would have been another version of a very typical story you've seen people. Like that 40-year-old girl we were watching and I was like, 10 bucks says she's trauma and she had been assaulted as a child. And I called it because extreme behavior is usually a sign of an interesting story. What's your story? Why are you going to the extremes? Because usually, like, usually you're trying to save something or help something or fix, you know what I'm saying? Okay, let's see where kid goes with this. If I had made a video about Lachlan, I would have told you personal things about him that he had told me in confidence. I would have told you his real name. I would have told you his ethnicity, his height. True. God forbid, I would have told True. you details about his favorite films and everything. Stuff. But she did, you know, I noticed that too. Like she would, she would take out like the most simple things that I didn't think about in a way to keep him anonymous, which I thought was really good actually. Mimi says, do you think there's a savior complex difference between men and women? Yes, I do. I think it's similar in many ways, but I've noticed that the way men do it is by providing them something like security and the way that women do it is by tolerating bad behavior. Savior complexes in women usually can manifest in like paying for bills and stuff, but it's from a when he gets his shit together, it will be great. But right now he's in a bad place. And with a guy, it's, oh, you don't have to do anything, baby. I've got you. I'll take care of you. That's the typical. I'm going to stare. I'm going to generalize. I've noticed that even in myself, the way I would do it is I would like, I've got it. I can pay for the bills. It's not a problem. You'll get on your feet one day, right? Like you want to like save them from their childhood or their life or like save them from like what you think is happening to them versus realizing like, oh, it's them. Like, cause sometimes guys, the people you're trying to save, they need to save themselves because they're going to drag you down with them. They're like drowning people in water. They're going to drag you down, girl. Sometimes it'd be like that. I don't think you really ever save people. I think you help in the right way with wisdom to get people back on their feet. But those people got to walk themselves, you know? That I would have never divulged. Those things are his story. They're his experience. They are not for me to share. And even though I have absolutely no respect whatsoever for this individual, I would never dream of violating that confidentiality, of violating that boundary. Just because I don't respect him, it doesn't mean that I can't act respectfully toward him. Lachlan oh. was relevant only- Amen, kidology. Two wrongs don't make a right. Turn the other cheek. When he goes low, you go high. That doesn't mean you can't tell your story, girl, and call a bitch out. Mm hmm I agree. In so far as he directly contributed to my experiences. And again, I have every right to talk about those experiences and what that put me through and how I felt about that and how I responded to that and what I learned from that. That was the entirety of that video. And it is so, so telling to me of how emotionally manipulative he is, not just to me, but to you, the viewer, that he made it appear as if Lachlan, that is Lachlan K, was his real name and proceeded to write paragraph after paragraph of personal identifying information about him when absolutely nobody knew who he was mm -hmm. because I, still don't, I made sure that I still don't know who the bitch is don't want to know don't need to know absolutely nobody knew or would know who he is and that's really difficult because you always oh. hope people will change well maybe if I'm <laughs> that's me <laughs> look at twins <laughs> nice to him he'll change maybe if I do this he'll change well maybe if I do this he'll change uh oh oh my god Lachlan's in the comments oh yeah he's crazy he made a username called Lachlan. Oh, damn, girl. Lachlan here. Here's what I emailed in response for anyone interested. I have no problem with this video, video being uploaded, and I admit that I was an awful person throughout. The only thing I would have I would have appreciated is that some notice before it was posted, a certain close friend, family friend, members I'd confided in instantly knew it was about me, and its uploading has caused some of them significant degree of stress at a difficult time, dealing with severe illness in the family. Punish and criticize me all you want. I deserve it, but my family friends don't. No, I call bullshit. I call bullshit. First of all, why would your family and friends even know? And second of all, I don't give a f what you're suffering with. Did you do this? Your family and friends should probably send you to therapy. And also, I feel like this is him manipulating. With a day's notice, I could have at least made sure they did not see it. I communicated this to Z in response. She teased a part two. So the factor is obviously not an importance. Fair enough. No, I don't think it's... Yeah, I don't think this is... Mm -mm. Anyways, names and details uh, excised. Yeah, no, this is this is like baby reindeer. Baby reindeer literally was not even named. And she came out 
and was like, it was me. I'm baby reindeer. Girl, no one of us would have knew unless you said something. Everyone knows that's what stalkers do. Stalkers confirm they're the stalkers because they want to. He's confirming he's the guy when he didn't even have to. Now he made up a name. This isn't a real YouTube channel, right? He made up a fake channel called Lachlan. You didn't have to do that. You could have just ignored the video, bro, and told your family, yo, I don't know who this YouTuber is, but she's fucking smart, bro. She's kind of smart, though. Oh, yeah, some shit on the internet, bro. What are you talking about? This impacted your family. Impacted your family to know you're a, like, just adjacent. I said what I said. Like, it impacted your family to know, like, you're a, you're, like, you're a stalker, basically. What are you talking about? What do you mean it impacted your family? Now, the main point of Lachlan leaving these comments. Man, she said what she said. She said what she said comments on my channel was to make it publicly known that my video had allegedly caused distress to a parent. This parent had seen the video because this parent follows me. The video had caused this parent distress during a time in this parent's life when they are going through some hardships and that this was ultimately as a result causing the family a lot of distress. I just want to make it very clear that the only reason why allegedly, and I say allegedly importantly, again I will get into this, Lachlan's parent knew that this video was about Lachlan is because Lachlan told them. I do not know Lachlan's parent. I don't even know the name of Lachlan's parent. I have not been in contact with them. I have absolutely no- <gasps> Meyer says her arms were bigger than yours. You know, that's the most fucked up thing Chad's ever said to me, bro. I think I'm gonna go, um, you know, that's a- I'm gonna go watch a sunset after this, bro. That's cruel, bro. You know, that's crazy though. Listen, shout out to the parents who have emailed me. Listen, I'm definitely one of those YouTubers. People slide into the DMs. I've had some parents reach out. I appreciate you guys. I, you know, I keep shit private. But, you know, when a parent reaches out, it can be painful to watch another adult talk about their kid who's an adult and be like, man, you're talking about my kid, bro. I'm like, I know. Now, the dilemma and the difference is that they know I'm talking about their kid because their kid's face is in the video. How does Lachlan's mother or father or parent know that this is about their kid? If their face ain't in the video. Hmm? You know how they knew? They're like, oh shit, that sounds like my shit son, bro. <laughs> They're like, this man stalked kidology? Gotta be Lachlan. Gotta be my son, bro. Parents know their kids are shit, bro. No relationship with this parent whatsoever. I spoke to them for, I would say, a maximum, and I'm being very liberal here, a maximum of five to ten minutes when Lachlan was hosting me a year ago. I have absolutely no qualms with this parent whatsoever, but I also have absolutely no relationship whatsoever with this parent. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'd also just like to add here that I got a lot of comments from people saying that I was leading this man on, that I wasn't clear that we were just friends. Now, all the way back when we were getting Girl. to know each other, Lachlan wanted my dress to send me a present for my birthday. I said, no, I don't celebrate my birthday. He then decided to buy me a present and again asked for my address so that he could <gasps> send me the present. Now what a fucking freak, bruv. What in it? In it fucking freak though, bruv. No, thank you. I don't want a present. I don't celebrate my birthday. I bought you a present though. When people do that, people will say, Brittany, can I please send you a, like when I got married, it was so sweet. People were like, hey, can I send you a wedding gift? I'd love to send you something. And it's like, no, that's so sweet though. Thank you, like, thank you for asking. But no, I appreciate when people want to buy gifts. I think that's so sweet, but then I'd have to give you my address. And I just don't do that with a lot of people. I don't give people my phone number usually. I'm very particular. Some people I'll give them my phone number and I think it'll be fine. But other people, you know, mm, I don't know about that. Obviously that puts me in a bit of a predicament because yes, I didn't want to give him my address. I already just don't like to give anybody my address. This wasn't just purely a Lachlan thing right. at that point. I just don't give people my address. It's just something that I do not do. Anyway, I was in a predicament now in a situation where he bought me a present, even though I told him I do not celebrate my birthday. I believe I only told him that it was sometime in February. He sent me a lovely gift and he sent me this card. And the only reason I'm sure- Oh, so she let him do it this card is because I want to dispel this idea that I was leading him on about our relationship. This was for my birthday in mid-February. Dear Z, happy birthday. I know you don't really celebrate it, but I shall nevertheless see it as an excuse to say how enjoyable it has been getting to know you and that I'm very grateful to have you as a friend. You're marvelous in many ways, Lachlan X. So this idea that Lachlan and some people seem to have that I was leading him on, that I wasn't clear about things or anything, we were just friends. There was nothing romantic that ever happened between us. Editing me here. I'd also just like to add that in one of my last Zoom calls with Lachlan, we were 
were actually talking about speed dating. I was talking about how positive an experience it had been for me and therefore he should speed date as well. Mm. And he was actually very grateful or was very thankful for me recommending this on a subsequent Zoom call because this was a good idea. That was what he said, not what I said, but he said that it was like a good idea and he was actually going to try and put himself out there. Not only share this particular specific topic of conversation because if I was trying to lead him on, I don't think I would be recommending and advising him to go speed dating. And I don't think he would have responded in the way that he did, which was at the time at least very positive. I was she wrote script on the screen that said, remember in part one, I said that he was seeing other people and that's why he was so crazy. Guys, just a reminder that he was seeing other people. Kidology went and got intimate with one of her other friends. And when she told him about it, because she was talking about her life, he got mad and jealous that she was sleeping with someone else and it wasn't him, even though they weren't dating. Bro, what? Ma'am? and sort of keeping him there as a potential partner. I was not interested in a romantic relationship with this individual and I made that very clear to him. Just thought I should clear that up. Thank you. Causing familiar Now I just want you to distress. remember and just to always keep it in your mind throughout all of this that I had told Lachlan at the end of May to never contact me again. After I posted my video about my experience, he sent me a incredibly long-winded email. The only reason why I'm going to share anything from this email is because he took this exact email and pasted it into my YouTube comment section Crazy. on his fake Gmail account. Can you imagine being like, I've grown, I've gone to therapy, I'm a better person. Let me share this very intimate email to my victim, which is an apology, with the public and demand that everyone get a chance to read it. Like, just imagine thinking that is what recovery looks like. Sir, ma'am, Go back to your program because you haven't passed. Found under Lachlan K. Every single thing in this email he put on my public YouTube comment section. Again, all of this of his own volition. All of this, at least insofar as the personal email to me goes, is a violation of my consent. Now, if somebody tells you to never contact them again, that means that they do not want you to send them email after email. Detail. This is why I'm so harsh about blocking. This is why I'm so harsh about blocking in 2024. Because I'm usually pretty lenient. I'm pretty, I over-explain to people. No. No. If you do not take my first initial message or my even second, look how lenient I am, and you go for a third, I'm blocking you. That is an insane, that's a you thing. It's not personal. I don't know you. Go to therapy. It's like even, even streamers I've talked to once or twice think somehow I owe them some form of intimacy or friendship or they'll be like, Hey, like I've had girls and guys do this. So, you know, it's not a gender thing, girl, where they're just like, I thought we were friends. What? Whoa. Y'all get too intimate with your coworkers way too fast, bros. Okay. Block. Block. And you know what's ironic? Oh my God. I can't believe I'm going to say this. You know what I do? Okay. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I look for how people act. Do you know how hard I've gone on, on Sneeko? how hard I've gone on Kidology. And neither of them have ever made shit content about me. Neither of them have ever retaliated in any way that wasn't reasonable. Neither of them have lied about me. Neither of them retorted to, like none of them went nuclear because I knew I'm making content, I'm being honest. And both of them have been very good at making me feel safe as a content creator because at the end of the day, as much as they're different from me or no matter how hard I go in on them, they haven't done those things. But other people who claim they're so much better and so much more aware have gone like nuclear and gone crazy. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, what? how is it that the people that everyone discounts because, oh, they're going to, I remember when everybody was on the Kidology's Crazy for calling herself a femcell arc. Like, I remember when everybody was like, Oh, like, you know, she just doesn't like, oh, she's such a girl, like a girl things, bro. Y'all are crazy. I'm kind of amazed at always who is the person who goes crazy and who isn't the person. It's kind of interesting. That's why I say Kidology is a very strong person. Even Sneeko, he's taken every criticism from me. Even his viewers were like, why are you going so hard on Sneeko? Isn't he your baby bro? Yeah, even more of a reason for me to go hard on him is that I want the best for Sneeko. So I'm not going to like pretend or I'm not going to lie to him. I'm going to make videos about him. And if I hope he sees them. I hope he sees all of my videos and thinks, fuck, I should be a better person, bro. But also he's on his own journey. It's just interesting. It's interesting, but this is crazy behavior. Lachlan is crazy behavior. Okay? Block people 
with no regrets. Failing the work that he's doing, how he's doing community service and trying to give back to the community, how he is trying to be less selfish or more selfless. He is telling me things that I have absolutely no interest in knowing, that I do not want to know, that I have never wanted to know since telling him to never contact me again. This is a violation of somebody's boundaries and a violation of somebody's consent to such an extreme degree that it is baffling to me how this is not seen as such a bad thing by mm. the person doing it, how this isn't seen as a violation of boundaries. Boundaries. As you can see, I have not responded to a single one of his emails since he has started writing me emails. And I will never, ever send him an email or be in contact with him ever again. I cannot reiterate this enough. And I'm saying this here because I know, I know that Lachlan is watching this. I know that he is watching my social media. I just know that just based on what he did in the last video and over the last few days and the things that he's been saying in these emails. And I also say this because of how he has been trying to emotionally manipulate me into writing him back. Oh. I say this, I know that my last videos have attracted a lot more young women into my audience and I'm thrilled about this. And I say this as a lesson to you because I have learned too late, sadly. If you say no to somebody, and they will not accept it. Mm -hmm. run. run. Run so far away. Just run. I don't know where, but as mm. far away from that person as possible. This individual, I have realized now after everything that has happened, is somebody who just does not understand consent, does not understand mm. or respect boundaries because they are emotionally manipulative. They cannot understand how other people cannot see things from their point of view. They cannot understand how people can feel bad about their actions because nothing is ever their responsibility nor their accountability. And just a newsflash as well, considering that Lachlan has sent me so many emails about how he's trying to change and be a better person, self-flagellating himself as being selfish and somebody who isn't compassionate and who didn't deserve me and all of these sorts of things. Just so you know, as a newsflash, these emotionally people, they will never change. They will mm. never actually do the work. And this is a perfect example of that. Oh, is Lachlan a one? Now that you always stay a one, right? And we talked about this before. I think people could always change, but will they? And usually the Lachlans don't because it's too fucking embarrassing to face yourself. <clears throat> you know, embarrassment is a killer, trust me. Like you could, you know, shame is a real killer, let me tell you. I have faith in humanity, but also someone's gotta be the part of the population that doesn't get better. Probably gonna be the Lachlans, probably gonna be the baby reindeers, probably gonna be the stalker. I'm sorry. Like we need to study it. We definitely need to do a lot more research into it, but you know, it is what it is. What they actually do is this, and this is precisely what Lachlan has done. They start off nice. They start off with the nice email, relatively nice email that Lachlan sent me and that Lachlan importantly publicly posted on my channel, which made a lot of people think that, you know, he's a nice guy. He deserves a chance. Like, sorry for everything that he is going through. And oh, and by the way, Maria says, can she report him based on his actions? Not really. Like even my stock. Nope. The stalker. See, if you call them the MY word, then they start getting it into their heads. Even the woman that stalked me, like she's on the internet. Like it's not, you know, I'm, you know, I try not to bring attention to her because it's really like unnerving, but also she's just like deeply mentally ill. And I'm one of many targets. You're not even special, bro. It's just some people get a locked. They decide to go for you. And like you invite this woman into your life and it will ruin your life. So good luck to anybody who tries to contact her because your life's about to be a living hell. And I, you know, it's like crazy how people try to just, you know, they they don't think about it. But no, you can't really report these people. You can take them to court. You can get a restraining order. You could do it, but it doesn't even matter because they'll find you on the internet. They'll find you on different usernames. They'll make videos about you. Like, you, there's nothing you can do. It's just like super unwell people. And that was very frustrating for me, by the way, when it first happened. And then now I'm just like, what are you going to do? People are sick, bro. And they're on the internet. Or people are sick and they're your neighbors. Or people are sick. Like, what are you going to do? There's probably nothing she can do, but that's what's like, just hide your location. I honestly, I'm worried that he knows where she lives and that frustrates, I, sh I would change my locks. I would get a double lock. I would get more security because God forbid, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's the scariest part. Like I'm always concerned over stuff like that. Like just, I would do the extra double safety stuff. I would even talk to maybe local law enforcement and let them know you know what I mean? There's some, there's some, but you know how it is with women and, and domestic violence or these men, or, or even my stalker was a female, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, it can be really unnerving. You can take precautions though. I feel like I make an effort. Kid can make an effort. She'll be fine, hopefully. But I think she should definitely like reinforce those locked doors and maybe 
be extra cautious when walking out at night because that's my concern obviously he's like he sent her a package now he knows where she lives and what had typically happened as i relayed in my previous video actually is that one of the good things about her telling us the story on the internet is she is actually leaving a trail i know that sounds really scary but i'm so sorry like you can never be too careful with these kinds of people like at least we know and there is a trail and if anything ever happens to her and the cops look at the YouTube channel, there's a trail of the Sky Lachlan. That's the scariest possible outcome. And hopefully it doesn't come to that. But obviously that's the problem. Why would you write that email on a YouTube channel? You're signaling to the world you're dangerous. That's what's scary, bro, is now you're signaling to the world we're dangerous. Okay. Oh, K.O. says she doesn't live alone. She has male roommates. Oh, let's go. Okay. Shout out to roommates. Let's go. Whenever Lachlan would do this, that is apologize for his behavior, for things that he'd said and done, I would respond with a, you're completely valid and it's fine. You don't need to apologize. Or I'd say, you know, I accept your apology. Actually, I never say I accept your apology. I always said you didn't need to apologize. And I apologize for having that tone when I finally did put my foot down. And of course, I now know this cycle with the Lachlans of the world, with emotionally manipulative people. What happens is they are kind and they are civil. They are nice. They are cordial. Until you don't respond to them yep. or until you don't respond in the way that they want you to, in yep. the way that they expect you to. When you don't respond in the way that they expect you to, or in my case, when I don't respond at all, that is when their true colors come out. Their true colors don't just come out, they explode like the feathers on a peacock. Now note in this initial email that he sends, which he importantly posts and decides to post of his own free will and volition onto my channel, where he says things like that he accepts that he's selfish, that he's spoiled, emotionally immature, and extremely inconsiderate, and that he hurt me horribly. Please also note that he says he doesn't expect a response to any of this, and there is nothing I hope to achieve other than to provide clarity on a few points. He says that he's sorry that he's made it difficult for me to trust people. Needless to say, the majority of people are not like me and you should not assume they are. I'm very glad to hear that you're in a good place mentally and generally. And for once, I've let myself be happy for myself that I am also trying to be better. Now, the thing with emotionally manipulative and people is that when they send you messages like this, they expect you to respond to them. They expect you to reach out back to them, to accept the olive branch, which they've extended out to yep. you. Now, Lachlan mm -hmm. sent this email to me at 3.42 in the afternoon. I didn't respond to this. Why? Because I had set a boundary in place to never be in contact with this man again. And this man was violating my boundaries, violating my consent yet again. And this wasn't the first time he'd already sent me two emails before this. Also, this is very important context. I didn't read any of the emails that he had sent me. I merely saw that I had notifications on my phone. I was busy during that day, so I wasn't going to read emails, let alone read emails from Lachlan. Mm -hmm. I saw that I'd gotten notifications and I read these emails today for the first time. So I didn't respond. And then at 5 past 7 p.m., I get another email from him. Now, I just want you to note how the tone in this email and all the emails after it is completely different to the tone in the initial email. It is incredibly telling, incredibly indicative of somebody trying to emotionally manipulate you. Thank you also for airing this without giving me any prior notice or warning. Why would I give you any prior notice or mm -hmm. warning? I am never going to speak to you again. Mm -hmm. I set that boundary in place. I do not have to give you. You're just a memory in her life, bro. You're just some guy she knew at some point in her life. Why would she message to talk about you? You are simply a past story, my bro. That's what you are. You're just some guy she knew at some point you any warning about a video that is about my experiences on my channel on my social media i'm going to get into this just now so i won't say it right now but i need to just make some things quite clear about this very weird parasocial relationship that him and allegedly a parent of his seems to have with me i believe i had mentioned to you that i discussed some of this with my parent so it was not difficult for them to work out it was about me i had told this parent most of it though obviously not the parts that are most uncomfortable so the content itself is not so much the issue please remember this please please remember this that lachlan says that he is the one who had told the parent most of this mm. So the story isn't connecting. What a little boogie, bro. What a little boogie woogie. What a little liar, bro. What a fucking little Weasley liar, bro. Is that what Hassan says? What a fucking little Weasley liar, bro. <laughs> okay, what a fucking Weasley little liar. What a liar, bro. And that the content itself is not the issue. But this parent is very stressed by the fact that there is a public video online trashing me and my personality. Okay. 
My video wasn't trashing Lachlan or his personality. My video was chronologically going over my experiences with Lachlan verbatim. If you do something bad to me and I talk about it, I'm not trashing you. I'm talking about the bad thing that you did to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not trashing you. The bad things that you did are entirely on you and are entirely your responsibility. And this is the f Ooh, girl, if I was a married... Ooh. Girl, I actually think kidology might be too young for me. But other than that, girl, if I was a married girl, mm, she's never looked better. She's never looked hotter. Oh my God, let's go. First of many instances of the attempt at emotional manipulation that Lachlan wheels himself into here. I've explained to my parents that you've anonymized me, but this is still causing them tremendous stress at a time when they are dealing with a lot of things. The way I acted toward you was wrong, but airing all of this in public without at least notifying me is wrong too. With a bit of notice, I could have at least made sure they didn't see it. Now, I'm going to believe this. I know that at least the person who I consulted in my personal life about this thinks that this is all made up. Up. And I know just based on the emails that Lachlan sent me subsequently that a lot of people in the comments didn't believe this either and saw this as emotional abuse. Now, I completely agree that this is emotional manipulation, but I do want to talk about the parent thing first and foremost. And I say this with as much compassion as a stranger can have for another person, but also with reason. If this is true, I am sorry for whatever personal, familial struggles and pressures that Lachlan and his family are going through. I'm sorry for any hardships that any of my viewers are going through. This, however, has absolutely nothing to do with me. I do not know any of Lachlan's family. And as such, and because my video about my experiences with Lachlan have absolutely nothing to do with his family, I never spoke, not even once, about anybody in mm. his family. If members of his family decide to follow my social media, that is not my responsibility. It is also not my responsibility, as Lachlan has tried to rather manipulatively and subtly make it, to contact him privately to tell him when I'm uploading my next video on my experience so that his parent doesn't get stressed by it. Forgive me, but why is Lachlan's parent following me in the first place? Firstly, I don't know if it's just me. I thought that this was just protocol for anybody when a breakup happens. When, for instance, my ex-boyfriend broke up with me, I deleted his number, I deleted his email, I also deleted his parents' number and his parents' email, and I have never been in contact with my ex-boyfriend nor with his parents ever since. Importantly, if at the time I had had social media, I would have most definitely unfollowed his social medias and blocked him. And if I had his parents on my social media, I'm quite sure that we would have done the exact same. Mm, it obviously depends with people. Uh, it depends on the breakup and the relationship you have the family and how things went. But generally, you do usually cut ties with everybody out of respect and move on. You know, that is usually the protocol, though sometimes you can stay friends. You know, you know, parents, you know, I infamously do love parents. I just get along with them so well. But yeah, like usually you delete people, delete numbers, or you keep the number and you write, don't pick up if they call, you know. So yeah, ultimately you would just move on. But also why would their parent be watching her content? Because they were friends. Unless you said like, oh, my friend makes YouTube. Do you want to watch? Look, I do talk to my parents about YouTube and the drama and I tell my mom all the tea, but my mom has no idea who any of these people are. They wouldn't watch my friend's content. If I was like, hey, my friend makes YouTube content, it would be interesting. I guess, I don't know. So it feels like either the parent never saw the content. It probably is a lie. Or they did see the content and they felt like, they realized they raised a piece of shit son, which they already knew because how would they have known it was Lachlan? How would they have heard this story and realized it was their son? Unless Lachlan said, hey, mom, that's about me. Or hey, dad, it's about me. Like, how would they even know that? Thing. And considering that Lachlan has said that he told his parent all about our friendship and our friendship breakup as well, I cannot really understand why they would continue to follow me. And in that vein, I also cannot understand why if my video and my content is causing them stress, they continue to watch my content. Now, the reason why I say this is so manipulative and why this was, mm -hmm. in my belief, an attempt at Lachlan to try to get me to contact him, to be in contact with him and to feel some kind of guilt, to guilt trip me, is because he now made this not something that was causing him distress or something that was making him feel bad. Instead, it was making an innocent party feel bad. That is his parent. And now, of course, he has put me into a very beautiful little predicament. A predicament of, if I post this video without contacting him, then I'm a bad person because now I'm causing his parent distress because they're going to see the second video that I've posted. And on the other hand, if I contact him, I'm violating my boundary that I set, which is very important for me, for my well-being, for my values. Interestingly, either way, 
I look like the bad person because I'm mm. obviously not going to violate my boundary. I am obviously never ever contacting or speaking to this person ever again. And what is really important to me, and I think what is really important when dealing with people who are trying to emotionally manipulate you, is to realize that you really don't owe them anything. I do not owe Lachlan anything. I do not owe Lachlan's family anything. True. I do not know them. However, now I have to speak about them because I am making this video about my experiences and clearing things up because of stuff that Lachlan decided to publicly put onto my YouTube channel when I completely anonymized him and nobody knew who he was. There's something Still that don't. psychology with Dr. Anna says about parasocial relationships that I think Shout is out. really pertinent to this. Now here's the part that you might not like to hear me say. I think online people talk about parasocial relationships quite often as if it is the public figures who are to blame for their viewers' inappropriate behavior. And while I think that there are some pretty rare occasions where public figures do sort of stoke the flames of their fans' obsessions, like I said, that's pretty rare. Most of the time, I think this discussion kind of veers into victim blaming of the public figure. It is our responsibility as consumers of whatever form of media to make sure that it doesn't get out of hand, to make sure that we don't lose touch with reality or behave inappropriately with other people, or make sure that those parasocial relationships don't become unhealthy and extreme. I think if a viewer or fan or whatever you want to call them develops an unhealthy attachment to a public figure, unless the public figure has done something to actually bring on an unhealthy attachment to them, that is the viewer's responsibility to work through and figure out. I say this so often on this channel, we are not responsible for the feelings or the actions of other people. People don't deserve to be on the receiving end of unhealthy parasocial attachments just because their job requires them to be a public sure. figure. I completely mm -hmm. agree with Dr. Mm -hmm. Anna on this. I and other content creators who make videos about their personal lives or about something that has happened to them and anonymize the people who are involved in their story and in their life and their experiences are not responsible for the actions and the feelings of other people. In this case, Lachlan's alleged parents' decision to keep consuming my content of their own free will. In the same way that I chose to never contact Lachlan again, Lachlan chose to contact me. Lachlan chose mm. to allegedly tell his parents all about his unhealthy friendship with me and they all chose to keep following and watching me after the fact, if that is true. And you know, this email is trying to make me bridge a parasocial relationship with somebody who I have no relationship with, with somebody who is a viewer of my content because of stress and personal matters that have nothing to do with me. Those stresses and hardships are just that and I'm so sorry for anybody, anybody who is going through stresses and hardships. But it is not my responsibility to mediate and regulate that. That is not only a violation of my personal boundaries that I have set with Lachlan, but as a violation of boundaries that I have set as a content creator mm. for people who consume and view my content. Mm. He wanted to. Wait, Julia says it's, it's hard to get into details, but sometimes it's hard to have boundaries when it's not a two-way street. Boundaries are never a two-way street. Boundaries are never a two-way street. They are only two-way street when we're talking about something different. The boundaries I'm talking about, girly, has to do with you and only you. You set up the boundaries, not ultimatums, not threats, boundaries. Hey, I love you, bro. I'm excited for you to live your life and all that. Uh, reach out to me when it feels like a good vibe. And then if they reach out to you only when they need help, you say, hey, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that today. And they go, what do you mean you can't help me with that? You're my sister. And you go, I'm so sorry. I really can't help you with that today. This is this is all I can help you with. And I, I just can't help you with that today. And then you start to set down boundaries. And then they start to realize like, oh, you're standing up for yourself without tearing them down. This isn't about them giving you boundaries. It's about you as a sister and as a sibling, because we've all been there. And with a friend or whatever saying, hey, I love you. I can't actually do that for you. And I'm not gonna feel guilted into doing something that's against my values. The only Period. thing that makes me feel guilty is when I've betrayed my values. Thank Period. you so much to Brittany Simon. Period. I absolutely love Brittany's content. I am not going to feel guilted for doing something. Period, bro. Thing that is against my values. It is against my values to contact this person. And I'm not going to contact this person. And I'm not going to be made to feel bad for doing that. Major props, because honestly, bros, like I was worried. <laughs> I was worried, but this is a huge deal. That kid isn't violating her own boundaries. Because guys, boundaries is about what you do no matter what they do. Your values are what you do no matter what other people do. Like your belief systems, your way of seeing the world is about what you do no matter what people do, right? It's like, oh, everyone goes, well, they did it, so I get to do it. No, that's no. You don't get to stalk someone because they stalked you, bro. You guys, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind, okay? You feel me? So boundaries are about you. Hey, I appreciate this. I'm boundaries. You know, I get that some block if I have to block, you know, with peace and love. It's not you, the consciousness, bro. It's me. You're making me feel unsafe with the way that you're demanding my attention in a way that I feel is inappropriate. And that's the dilemma. There's a lot of just inappropriate behavior. I don't think people are malicious. I don't think they're evil. I don't think for the most part, but they're they're being so inappropriate. Just your ma'am. Absolutely not. And I've had it happen. 
I had it happen recently. God bless. I'm so sorry. I know this person's probably watching. I don't want them to feel too bad about it. But they literally tried to guilt me into giving them attention by saying like something bad happened though. Something bad happened. Like, I can't believe you're doing this to me on a day something bad happened. I don't know you. I don't know you. Like I barely have talked to you once. You assuming you get to demand my emotional labor and attention when I don't, don't do that to people, guys. That's mental health. Go see a therapist. Imagine a, a imagine a, like a, an, a, um, an emotionally stable, healthy person doing this to somebody and being like, this bad thing happened to me. Give me your attention. That, that's so inappropriate. Especially after I already messaged them before this bad thing had happened. And I said, hey, just so you know, I'm moving on from this. I'd like to clean up my list. I'm being very specific with who I collab with. Thank you for the time. I wish you well. And they were like, what? What? You don't want to collab with me anymore? I can't believe you're doing this to me. And I'm like, whoa. Relax, bro. And that's mental health. This person isn't evil. This person's mentally ill. I'm sorry. I can't do this emotional labor for you, bro. Blocked. Blocked. Mm. In reading these emails, I have come to realize the absolute emotional labor that oh. women are expected to do for Amen. man children. Yes, this Amen. is a man child. I it's saw a man child. It's, it's the man child and sometimes the women. The women also try to make me do emotional labor for them. Absolutely not. Okay, but ooh. Some comments, there were some people who made comments. Basically, I think, um, you know, Lachlan found some, uh, you know, very kindred spirits in my comment section whilst he was incessantly commenting. And they were saying things like, you know, you're young and you'll learn and everything. I just want to make this clear. And this is the only thing that I'm going to say about Lachlan, any personal thing about him, that this man is well over the age of 30. Well oh. over the age of 30. This isn't somebody oh. who's in his 20s learning how- grown men in their 30s walking people wanting people to walk around oh that's rip rip <laughs> he's over 30 bro the way i was imagining a 25 year old bro he's over 30 that's crazy don't do emotional labor for especially men over 30 who can't get their fucking shit together jesus fucking christ get your shit together oh my god these people bro good for z bro i'm on team z bro how to navigate relationships and people and how to treat people this is a person who is well and i mean well into adulthood so let's get back to these emails he has sent me an email at around 3 30 in the afternoon he has sent me one at seven o'clock at night and now he decides to send me yet another email after i have yet again not responded at around 12 o'clock in the morning now mind you between 3 30 in the afternoon and midnight lachlan has decided i cannot emphasize this enough on his own volition to publish his email his initial long-winded woe is me and i'm so sorry and I'm to blame for everything email onto my video, into the comment sections of my video, exposing personal information about himself that I have not and would never on his fake email account called Lachlan K. You know that it was wrong to turn this into public drama. Lachlan, you are the only person who turned this into public drama. If your intention was to hurt me, then well done. You have achieved that by hurting those closest to me. I love how it's me that has hurt him and those closest to him. It's not him and his behavior and his actions that have hurt those closest to him that have hurt him. Again, this is is emotional manipulation 101. This is not a good person. Not at all a good person. And it takes me a lot to call somebody not a good person. I don't think I have ever, in at least my adult life, called somebody a bad person because I appreciate that people are nuanced, are multifaceted, are going through things. But this individual has shown me repeatedly, time and time again, that they are actually just not a good person. Mm. It is so telling when somebody tells you about all the work that they're doing, how they're improving. They're so apologetic to you. They say or claim that they accept all the bad things that they did to you, how they did you wrong and then this this is how they treat you this mm. is what they say to you when you don't fall for the when you don't fall for their attempt to emotionally bro lachlan i'm trying to think of a funny way to put it lachlan's like boogie where he's like i'm working out i'm trying i'm doing things like literally he does these types of people they're just like i'm how was you know i'm working on my diet i've been really working on it well they're literally gorging mcdonald's it's like they want the credit for being better and doing work without actually doing the work. That's why that email or that message he sent on the the original video that I read out loud, 
That's why I was like, this is bullshit. He wants all of the credit. I'm getting help. I'm going to this. I'm doing this. I'm working on myself. Are you? Then why are you putting out this email in the public? If you've been working on yourself and you're holding yourself accountable, why are you repeating your pattern? We talked about this, I think, on stream, right? How do you know people have changed? They do. Their actions are different. They are different people. You'll know, just like with kidology, how do we know kid is changing? Because this is not the same kidology I talked to eight months ago. Go back and watch my last two conversations with kidology, but specifically even the last one. This is a fiery, this is a fiery bitch right here, okay? She is dominant. She is topping the fuck out of this conversation. She's got a determination in her little eyeballs that, girl, this is a changed person, okay? In the same way that you go back and watch my old content from even two years ago, that's a different Britney. Lachlan sounds like he's gonna be this way for the rest of his life. He's already in his 30s. And he's at this point in his life, Mm -mm, girl, no, no, you know, I'm telling you, there's something here. There's a change in this woman, bro. And there's not going to be a change in a Lachlan. I guarantee you. Manipulate you into forgiving them, into communicating with them again. Because all he wants right now, it's clear, it is so clear to me now that all he wants for me to do is to contact him again, is to violate my boundary, to show that my boundaries don't actually matter because this person cannot humanize me. I have never been considered a human to this person. And what is also really interesting to me is that this person fell in love with kidology, that is with me, the content creator. They love that I did content, especially personal content about my life and my experiences, about being a femsel, about my childhood and my personal history but now I'm making the exact same content that I make because I'm a content creator but it's about my experience of them and now it's a problem for me to make personal content it's very telling my parent and another member of my family who I'd recommended your channel to and who knew for instance that we were meant to go on holiday their estimation of me will never recover I don't understand any of this (laughs) good Good. Oh my God, girl. The way he's like, my family will never look at me the same. Good. Uh, Bro, what are you fucking talking about? You know what? I'm so sorry, girl. I'm so sick of it, bro. I'm in a mood today. I'm in a let. I feel confident today. Let me tell you, bros. These people who act badly and they're like, hey, you told people that I act badly and now they think I act badly. And I was like, do you act badly? They're like, yeah, I totally did that. And I'm like, okay. Lachlan literally said nothing Kidology said in the video was a lie. In his own email, he literally said, yes, everything Kidology is saying is true and I'm sorry for it. And now my family looks at me different. Well, girl, they probably should. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? All these people that are like, what, what, what are you, why are you, why are you telling people that I'm a, that I do the things that I do? Humans, bro. I love humans. I love them. It's my problem. I don't understand why I need to know any of this. Why? <laughs> my parent is particularly distraught, angry, and ashamed. Mimi says, do you think Lachlan was necessary for her growth? I think a tool Lachlan gave her opened up a new, a popped a bubble for Z. The growth is never, it's never like linear and it's never, uh, you know, finished. But I think Lachlan coming into her life was an opportunity for Z to learn a tool and she took the tool. She didn't have to, though. Lachlan could have come into her life and she could have not gotten the tool that the universe was sending her. So to make it sound a little bit more woo-woo, though I don't think you have to, in life, we have opportunities. And if we learn from that opportunity, we grow. And if we don't learn from it, we don't grow. And so life itself is opportunity. All of life itself is an opportunity. And whether or not you grow is on you. You are the one who meets the opportunity and takes it. You don't have to take it though. And when you're ready, sometimes you have to get ready to take it. So don't worry. There's always, there's never missed time. There's never wasted time. There's never even missed opportunity. If I'm going to be honest, when it's the time, it'll be the right opportunity. But if you never take the right opportunity, maybe you're never ready 
to be that kind of person. That's the thing. It's like you have to be ready to take the opportunity. And no, sometimes people don't get ready to take it. Look at Boogie. He won't eat the cupcake no matter how hard they try to shove it down his fat face. Compounded with the stress of other issues. You're probably laughing and think I deserve that. Now I want to make two comments here. The first one I want to make, can you see how he's having a conversation with himself now? He's having a conversation with himself because I'm not responding. So he's making baseless assumptions. There's nothing wrong with making assumptions of people. Like I can make the assumption based on evidence and on previous evidence that Lachlan is watching this video because that is what Lachlan does. So I can make that assumption. He's making the baseless assumption that I'm laughing at his family and about the shame that this is allegedly causing his family who know about this video and about Lachlan because he decided to tell them. Somebody who's trying to emotionally manipulate you is always having a conversation with themselves, especially if you do not respond, if you do not take the bit or the bait that they put out for you. It is so clear to me now. I sort of feel like I've had cataracts and I've just had them scraped off and mm. now I can see clearly because, oh my goodness, this is horrifying. If somebody's estimation of you will not recover, that's on you. That is your problem. That's because of what you've done. That is because of your actions, which I am not responsible for. Again, the emotional labor that I am being expected to do for this grown, well over 30 year old man is astounding. The second point that I want to make here is a point that I think a lot of my, especially black and brown viewers, especially female black and brown viewers will know all too well. Please put a, this hand emoji. She's talking about me right now, guys. She's talking about me in the comment section if you've experienced this or if you know of this like from personal experience because this is something that is all too common. What can I call it? This is something that I would call the family honor syndrome. Now what will happen is a man in the community or in the family will do something bad. And he'll typically do something bad to a woman or to a child. And what will happen is that the woman or the child will speak out about this, will tell somebody in the family or in the community about it. And the response that the woman or the child gets is that of people blaming them. They will blame the woman or the child. They will be suspicious of the mm -hmm. woman or the child. Mm -hmm. People will say and whisper that you can't trust her with anything. And importantly, she will be blamed for bringing dishonor to the family or to the community. Now in all of this, the important thing that is constantly and always systematically, repeatedly forgotten is that the reason why this dishonor happened in the first place is because of the actions of the man who nobody cares about at all. Him and his actions are forgotten in this entire scenario, a very real scenario at that. Family honor syndrome can basically be summed up as it being more important to keep up the appearance and the veneer of honor than to actually be honorable. The woman will be shamed, as Lachlan tries to do by guilt tripping me. You have now dredged everything up in a cruel, clearly unconstructive way in order to get clicks and sell vibrators. Go ahead and post a part two now. It doesn't matter. The damage here is already done. Now remember, Lachlan brought his family into all of this, not just by posting about them on my video, but also in telling them about this and in having them follow me, which I did not even know. I was not privy to any of this. He mentioned once a long time ago that one of his parents followed me on Instagram, but that was all I if you bring your family who have nothing to do with something into a situation of your making and your doing in order to shield yourself of your actions, you're not just pathetic, you're also just trying to emotionally manipulate someone. And usually that somebody is like me, a woman who cares about family, who can be guilt tripped into caring about such things, who obviously has a sort of maternal instinct within her and doesn't want to cause anybody distress or stress or any harm of the kind. But I am not the one doing the hurting. You, Lachlan, I know you're watching. You're the one who is doing the hurting. You're the one who is responsible for all of this drama that has been created by you. I completely anonymized you. Nobody on planet earth knows who you are. The only reason this family member, if this is even true, knows who Lachlan in my video is, is because Lachlan told them. Now, mm -hmm. if only that were the end of it, but oh no, Lachlan writes to me yet again. At 10 in the morning, he says, I've spoken to my parent this morning and explained that the video is completely anonymous and you've removed all details. My parent was calmer than yesterday, so has understood. Again, why do I need to know any of this? This is such toxic parasite sociality. This is a parasocial relationship mm. that I have not in any way condoned at all. I have not condoned because I have set that boundary in place to never contact me. I do not wish to know any of this. I do not need to. I do not want to know any of this. This is none of my business. Stop making it my business. I commented on your video with the email I sent to you. Now note that he commented with the email, the first one. He hasn't put in any of the other emails that he sent me because I assume that he knows that that would make him look very bad because it does mm. look bad. It mm. looks very desperate and it looks very manipulative and it also just 
just does not read well at all. I commented on your video with the email I sent you because I was angry that after I told you how stressed my parent was by all this, you teased a part two to your viewers as if you didn't care and were just out to hurt me further no matter what. As I said, I have only read these emails today. I teased a part two as he called it. I wasn't teasing a part two. I was just asking if anybody was interested because I wanted to make a video about the violation of consent because this person had emailed me and I thought it was a very interesting topic just based on the response that I had been getting. He has absolutely no evidence that I'd opened his emails beforehand and read any of this. And considering I didn't even reply to any of his emails, the fact that he's assuming that I had read what he'd said about mm. the personal things that he was going through and then didn't care and was laughing and thought he deserved it is just the paranoia mm. that this individual had. I will say as crazy as it sounds, I have gotten emails like, you know, you have exes or relationships or whatever. I don't open them like as much as people would think like, oh, I'd want to read every email. It gets exhausting. You just don't want to keep reading them. And it's the same thing every time. And it just makes your day worse. And, you know, it's like people think like, oh, she's definitely reading my messages. Sh honestly, bro, not really. I know you guys are saying in chat she has to stop making the videos. I think eventually, yeah, this won't be her story anymore. Her whole channel isn't going to become this, obviously. But we're in a series and it will end. And the same way, Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Great series ended, right? And you move on with your life. But this is what's happening in her life. It's interesting. She wants to share it. She has the right to share it. It's not going to become her whole channel. And eventually she should stop it for her own sake and because he'll probably never stop. So I'm predicting it right now. He will never stop sending her messages. He will never stop bothering it. He might even make a video about it one day. And as long as Kidology stands up for herself, she'll be fine. But also she'll eventually not have to anymore. Because that's the thing is like, ultimately, this person's probably never going to let it die down. I mean, he's in his 30s and hasn't figured it out. I doubt he's going to figure it out anytime soon. But this is important. This is a part of Z's story. This is canon for a lot of us girlies. She can even take down these videos eventually. But for now, it's good that I think she's doing this. I think it's really cathartic. I think it's good for all of us to learn from these, you know, and learn from these situations and also, God forbid he ever does anything because he knows where she lives. You know, it's nice to have a paper trail for all of us to at least say like, hey, there was a guy named Lachlan and he was freaking out on her because this is, these are the situations women are afraid of. I don't know how y'all have one night stands and take people back to your apartments. I don't even know. Well, I guess it doesn't make sense because he wasn't a one night stand. He was a friend who she got to know over a little bit of a while, which is even worse. See how it's always someone you know? The point is you never know. And I'd rather her side on caution, at least people know. At least we know. That's something. You know, at least people in her life know. That's something. You know, I mean, when I was going through my stuff with the stalker, it was really important that I like went home to my family. I was like, I've never dealt with somebody like this. I don't know what to do. They're accusing people in the community of doing horrible things. They have so many victims. I just don't know what to do. And, you know, you do your best. There's not a lot you can do. You know, I don't mention my stalker. I don't talk about them. I don't have to. Like, you know, they can never, you know, we have, we've settled our thing. I don't name names, you know, for a reason it's for my protection. Cause ultimately, like as long as a person is sick enough in the head to still be obsessed with you, you just never know. So it's better to just cite on caution, right? Um, with that said, she should never name him and she shouldn't have to do that unless the police are involved because this way, ultimately, like she's responsible for telling her story. And it's on him because nobody knows who he is. Just like the baby reindeer situation, they've never confirmed it's her. Only she's confirmed it's her. Don't give them the satisfaction of confirming it's them. And this saves you from obviously le legal stuff, right? If you name people, there's a possibility of legal stuff coming your way. As surrounding me and my actions without any evidence of what I'm actually doing is astounding. If you go ahead and post it, please just give me one day's notice so I can make sure that they don't see it. Please do that. No, because I am not responsible for what content you decide to consume. I, for instance, have an issue with watching films or shows where there are particular scenes or there are particular instances of 
against women. There are certain things that I cannot watch. So whenever I'm about to watch a show, to watch a film, to go to the cinema, I'll go onto IMDb and I'll see what is in a film, what is in a show. A few years ago, I watched 12 Years a Slave and because of particular scenes, I could not handle it, but I continued to watch it. So what happened? For the next few weeks, I was traumatized and I was vomiting and I couldn't eat and I made myself ill. Now that isn't the fault of the film. It isn't the fault of history. It isn't the fault of the actors. It isn't the fault of anybody. That is my problem. I decided to consume that content. I decided to put myself into that situation. And importantly, I decided not to click off. Nobody else is responsible for that but me. In the same way that I do not understand why if my content is causing anybody distress, if you do not like my content, if it makes you unhappy, why are you watching my content? It is not my responsibility to make my content more palatable for you because of things that are happening to you. Okay, hold on. Because Pulu says, well, for my comment was the outline of it's her right. It's a poor excuse for poor behavior. Second, imagine an ex sharing all your information. Will just your name react retracted? Bro, it's not an ex. It's a friend. It wasn't an ex. And this is her story in her life. And if you're on team incel, I will block you the fuck right now. I will block you the fuck right now. Because doing shitty things to people. This is OK. You know, what? here's the moral conundrum for you bitches. OK. We'll always say, why don't people tell on predators? Why don't people tell people or warn people in the community? Because of the Pulus. Because you think she's just an angry bitch who's airing his dirty laundry. Do you think that's just what's happening? Or do you think we're fundamentally calling out a predator? Or if not predator, a stalker, which is a form of predator. Okay? Think about it. We're always wondering, why do people get away with shit? Because people shame you into telling your story because you're going to cause an issue. What about him? What about him? She didn't identify him. She didn't use his name. He's the one making the attention on himself and he probably fucking loves it. And ultimately, God forbid something bad happens to Kidology. I hope you feel fucking bad because it's exactly men like this that end up stalking women in their homes and end up doing something horrible to them because they didn't get their way. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and team incel because you're projecting yourself into this loser's shoes, then you maybe need therapy too. This man is not just some guy she dated. It was a friend who violated her consent multiple times and stalked his way into her life and continues to bother her. Get your shit together. And if I see another fucking comment, I'm going to block you. Okay? I'm a tolerant bitch. But not today, bros. Not today. <laughs> you when I don't know you. I respect and appreciate everybody who consumes my content, but I am not responsible for how you feel about what you are consuming on my channel. When you have as much volition as you do to click on my content, to click off my content, to block me, to tell YouTube that you are not interested in my channel. I am not going to violate my boundary and let this man continue to violate my consent, to violate and to take advantage of the boundaries that are put in place for him to feel less guilty for what he did to me, for the emotional manipulation, if not a that he put me through and is putting me through here. So I get another email. I love how my entire video was about my experiences, mm. especially with my mental health and that I have been in a very, very bad mental health state that I was for a large part of this year so far and how none of that mattered to him when we were friends and when I spoke to him instead it turned back to it being all about him not being able to save me or him not being able to show me what real passion is and now of course this again has all turned into not my experience as the video was about my experience completely anonymizing him but all about him and all about how this has made him feel and how it is importantly because I think he knows that I don't really care about how he feels but about how an innocent party feels because of this mm -hmm. and how that is somehow my fault. This email is an absolute uh -oh. doozy. And if you think this is all a lie, as some of your wonderful viewers seem to, I can ask my parent to contact you directly and talk to you. Freak! I do not know your family. I do not know your parent. I've never spoken to your parent. This is such a violation. Such a violation. Mm. It's astounding. And he mm. continues. That would be the cruelest thing you could make me do. But oh! if it's literally the only way to... This bitch offered. He's like... If you really think this is all a lie, as some of your wonderful viewers seem to think, I can ask my parent to contact you directly and talk to you. That would be the cruelest thing you could ever make me do. Do you... That... He... He... <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you're the one who offered and then goes, that'd be so horrible. That'd be so horrible, bro. 
That'd be so horrible. Don't make me do this. Bro, nobody wants to talk to your fucking mom. Especially since I saw her last week and she didn't even say my name loud enough for me to approve. Convince you, then I'll do it. Emotional manipulation and a 101. I'm not making him do anything. I haven't responded to a single one of his emails. Not one. The <laughs> taking of responsibility off of himself and placing it onto me is just textbook. That would be the cruelest thing you could make me do, as if I'm responsible. You know, Destiny recently posted a clip from his stream about this kind of emotional exploitation that people do in messages and in emails, and it applies perfectly here. There's behavior that I would call assurance-seeking behavior, and anytime you're doing this, you're putting the other person in the conversation in a very difficult to navigate spot because you're preying on their innate desire to kind of like calm you down, basically. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Lachlan here is trying to prey on my innate mm -hmm. desire to alleviate the suffering that allegedly that I'm causing, that I'm causing not just to their family member, actually, but to the family. What they do is the goal is and everything I'm about to say is this is not like a um, this isn't like um, this isn't like a cognitive process where somebody's like thinking and mapping out all the things. This happens like very naturally, very, um, do I say impulsively? It just it happens very naturally because usually people that communicate this way are used to doing it, okay? The goal is, is I am going to communicate to you, okay, there's like three things, okay? I'm going to communicate to you that, <clears throat> that you have caused a problem. You need to remedy the problem. Mm. It will cause me intense discomfort until you do, okay? That is exactly what Lachlan has done. I have allegedly caused a problem by me. That's what happened to me this week. That's what happened to me this week. No. No. Making this public drama by making a video mm. about my own experiences. Mm. I now need to remedy the problem. That is, I need to tell him, violate my boundaries and tell him mm -hmm. before I post a video about this. And mm -hmm. three, it will cause me intense discomfort until you do. I have to contact him. I have to call or talk to his parent because it is causing discomfort. People will communicate in a way that has all three of these things working in tangent, and it takes, it's very, very, very difficult to counter it without being a sociopath. And that's exactly what has sadly happened, because now I know I'm gonna get a few comments from people who are going to say that I'm in the wrong for all of this, that I'm a sociopath and all of this. And I think this is why it is so difficult to actually deal with being emotionally manipulated and emotionally by mm. people. But I refuse. I really do refuse. And I really want this to be a message that you should not empathize with people who do this. And I don't think that Lachlan is sitting there like, you know, meticulously calculating things. I think this comes from a very emotional and very irrational place, but that is no excuse. But I refuse to empathize with this grown man anymore. He is too many years older than me. And there are too many people like him out there who are coddled by the cycle of emotional manipulation that they do, who are coddled by these three points that mm, destiny pointed mm -hmm. out that they do incessantly and get away with it mm -hmm. and i think too many people see this is okay you know what's frustrating about steven is he does know and he has to deal with shitty people all the time but he doesn't understand he has the same problem he has the same problem he puts people in horrible situations where they either have to keep his shitty secrets me okay or they're bad people, but then you put the burden on them and now they're like, holy fuck, why would you tell people that? Don't tell people things. Because it's fucking horrible. He does the same fucking shit. That's why I'm so annoyed with him. Why would you do this to people? Don't do this to people. But they don't understand because like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't do this to people, but people do it to him because he does it to other people. Don't do it to people. And then they don't do it just because of that. But you know, like attracts like. That's why I just block people now. If you tell me your secrets, I'm blocking you. Don't tell me anything. I don't want to know your deep, dark secrets. I don't want to know the horrible things you've done to people. I don't want to carry the burden. I, you're, I don't love you like that. Okay? I don't want to know. Don't tell me. This is why it's so annoying. It's so annoying. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. Fuck. Fuck. I hate being put in these positions. It really fucking bothers me. Okay? It really bothers me. <sighs> Ooh, I hate it. Oh, especially women are tired. We're exhausted. This exhausted. is honestly insane. I'm so tired. Now, I thought about including this message in my video, and I think it is important because, I mean, I'm never speaking to Lachlan ever again. And I also know for a fact that he is watching this video because, well, he can't help himself. And in that vein, this is therefore a message to all the Lachlans of the mm. world who people are getting incredibly, incredibly tired of. Do not ever, ever 
contact me again. Never. Either through my email, my business email, my personal email, if mm. you somehow have that. Do not contact me via my comment section. Do not contact me via my address. And I don't say that for you to not do that for me. Don't do it for yourself. I do not need to nor want to know anything about you, about what you are doing, nor anything about mm -hmm. those associated with you. Mm -hmm. Because to be fair, all you're doing is giving me important content to make. And this is important, just based on the comments that I've gotten from people. This clearly means something to people and is important to them. This is something that is a very <sighs> common experience for way too many women. It was actually horrifying reading my comments of people telling their stories of how this had happened to them. I am so fortunate and so lucky that I have a YouTube channel where I can actually talk about this and actually have some semblance of control over what is happening to me. I can actually address this emotional manipulation that this person is trying to put me through, this violation of my boundaries and consent, which so many people, mm. especially women, do not have. It is mm. so so horrifying. And I will keep making content about the people who violate my boundaries, about people violating people's boundaries and consent. Because this idea of the family honor syndrome, this idea of not- Make the appropriate amount of comebacks and then tell them to fuck the fuck off. But don't back down. I actually struggle with this too because it makes you, like, it's confusing. Like, I think that's what's so confusing is like, when do you stand up for yourself and when do you not? This is where I refer to Luffy and the Bellamy moment. Luffy picks picks and chooses his battles. You must pick and choose your battles. Not airing out dirty laundry, which I didn't because I'm just talking about my experiences. I am perfectly valid in doing that. And it is so important to do that. It is so important for us to address these things and to talk about them. There is too much shame in this society that is allowing people to bully other people, that is permitting people to hide behind their terrible, deplorable actions. Lachlan's apologies aren't good enough because one, they're in public. They should, I shouldn't even be seeing this. The fact that it's posted, hold on, what did she say? She said, this brought me to tears because it's so true. This is one of the best, most important things I've heard. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know who this girl is, but. Lynn's apologies aren't good enough because one, they're in public. They should, I shouldn't even be seeing this. The fact that it's posted here is so weird. That means he wrote it to Z in an email and then still thought the public needs to see it because he's not sorry for what he did to her. He's sorry she told us. Mm -hmm. He's sorry he was found out because if he was really sorry, he would have taken it as a responsible adult as something he did between them. And that's it. Z didn't tell us who he was. Z's allowed to tell us her story. And the fact that this is her story means like it was eventually going to be something she was allowed to tell. You can't hurt people and expect them not to tell. That's why the bridges burn because you expect to hurt people and not be told on. No, you cannot hurt people and expect people not to tell. Now, if they lie about you, that's unfair. Mm -hmm. But Lachlan's not proving she lied about him. And that's the problem. Lachlan's admitting he did everything she said. He's just trying to make excuses for it. Mm -hmm. I don't accept your excuses. You don't get to hurt people because they hurt you first. Or you don't get to hurt people because they hurt you last. You don't get to hurt, like, do you have values or not? Do you have values or not? And Lachlan doesn't have values. What he has is a really well-written email that's going to convince people that he gets to do bad things because these people were mean to him. Nope, you don't. Hmm. That's not how it works. You don't get to do bad things and expect people not to tell people. And at the same time, again, okay, if he, again, if she, sorry, if Z lied about him, then he should say that, but he's not even saying that. I'm most definitely not ashamed for my video or for what I said. And mm. I'm most definitely not ashamed for making this video and talking about what has recently transpired. As we all know here, I am a content creator and I make content about modern society. And that sometimes includes myself via my personal stories and experiences. Mm. Me doing that is not harassing anybody, especially when I anonymize them, nor is it causing anybody any harm. The Lachlans of the world are doing this all on their own. Lachlan is doing that for reasons only he knows by following my social media, by by emailing me repeatedly, by creating a fake Gmail account to comment under the name Lachlan K. I didn't make my video because I was hurting or because I wanted to get back at you. None of this is about you. I know that's difficult to mm. understand, especially for people who may see a bit of themselves in the Lachlans of this world. But my video was about me. It was about my experience with Lachlan. My video wasn't about Lachlan. It wasn't about trying to get one up on him or to get even with him or to get back at him for ending our friendship. I find introspection very important and I've always found my personal videos very cathartic ways and means for me to actually do that kind of exploration of my actions and of what has happened. I'm so sorry. You know, at the beginning of the video when Kid was like, hey, I'm very stiff during this video stiff girl you're full of fire and passion girl this video isn't stiff you're fire and passion and just you're so confident and sure of yourself this is the most confident i've seen z and i'm living for it this is like she is like absolutely not and she's got her shit figured out in this situation she's right i stand by z fuck lachlan fuck all these emotionally immature men who expect you to do all this emotional labor for them jesus christ
happened mm. to me. I made that video because I always make videos about my experiences and about myself. And that was just another one of those videos. It was Lachlan's choice to expose himself. That's his prerogative, but it is not my responsibility. I am not doing your, that is Lachlan's, emotional labor and accountability for you. Grow up. I don't know if it's going to happen. And to be fair, I do not care. But I just really hope that you do because I hope the best for everyone. I really do. Anyway, thank you so much mm. for watching this part two. I just thought it really important to put out there just based on what these emails contained and what I think they really represent. I have seen people like Destiny, for instance, speaking a lot more about sort of emotional and emotional manipulation and mm -hmm. I think that just based on the comments so many people go through this so many people have experienced this and so many people do mm -hmm. this without knowing I don't think most people who do this kind of thing know what they're actually doing or really introspect enough to appreciate what they are doing to other people I do not believe at all that Lachlan really appreciates what he has put me through and what in these subsequent emails mm -hmm. he is showing and exposing of himself and I think it is so so important that we actually talk about these things because that is the only way that we are going to improve this idea idea of keeping everything in the family, of shame being the thing that keeps everything hush hush about keeping up appearances is absolute bullshit. But anyway, <laughs> this is nuts to me. But anyway, thank you so much. Thank you so, so very much for watching this video, this part two. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you can take something from this video. Please do share in the comment sections your experiences and your thoughts. I will see all of you very, very soon in the next one. Loved it. Fabulous. Fantastic. Give me 14 of them. Fantastic. Give me 14 of them. Okay, I love that. We love to see the passion. We love to see the fire. Look, life is messy. You have messy moments in it. No big deal. Everyone can move on. Look, I think everyone can get better. I don't hold grudges, bitch. If you change, I'm changed. That's my rule. But you got to change. And if you don't change, then you can't expect people to treat you different no matter how old you get. If Lachlan won't change, then it doesn't matter if he's 45 or 60. People are going to treat him the way he is. Boogie is 50, basically, right? And he hasn't changed. You can't expect people to treat you differently when you don't change. Okay? So shout out to Z because I see the change. The change isn't ever once and it's never linear, but it is constant if you want it to be. And obviously Z is making an effort. She's been consistently growing since I've met her or seen her content. And we love to see it. Shout out to the first time I ever watched Z's content and I literally was like, ugh, I hate that she uses music in her videos. I think it's so manipulative because I am just like neurodivergently weird and when I hear music in videos, I just know it's like in my head it's marketing. And then when we first did our collab together, she was like, she was talking about how she heard me say that and she was like, oh, and I was like, oh, and like you forget when you make content, people see it. But ultimately, how beautiful that you can speak your truth and people can understand it's just your story. I'm always just talking about my own values, even when I talk about you. When I talk about Z, I'm not talking about Z, bro. I'm talking about how I feel in relation, how with, what Z's content makes me learn about myself. What my interactions with other YouTubers make me feel about myself, learn about myself. How do I want to have relationships? How do I conduct myself? In which ways do I feel uncomfortable? We're never really talking about each other. And I know when people talk about me, they're not talking about me. They're talking about how my content makes them feel or how somebody likes me, like me makes them feel, right? We're never really talking about other people. Listen, when you don't like someone, it's not the consciousness. It's you don't like how you feel when you're around them. You don't like that they won't change so you're comfortable around them or you just don't wanna see them or can't see them and can't vibe with them. All of those are fine reasons not to like somebody. But it's not really ever about them. It's about you. Everything we do is about our internal relationship, our perception with an existing, so everything that we are in existence, everything outside of ourselves. We're never really upset with other people. We're upset with ourselves and how uncomfortable we are in the world. We're not really upset that people believe differently from us. We're upset at how the thought of them believing differently from us makes us feel. And usually it's related to fear. Fear is the root of all evil. And evil, in a philosophy sense, is furthest from your joy. Evil is when you're out of sync. So when you're in your fear, you're out of symbiosis. You're afraid. Everything is amplified. I'm afraid of these people. They think differently from me. I'm afraid of these people. They raise their kids differently than me. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid they could grow up and hurt me because they, they don't understand me and they don't, they don't think like I do. Okay. So let's have a conversation. Are we all going to raise our kids to grow up and hate these people and hurt them? 
Well, then let's stop that action. And why are we doing it in the first place? Because we think, oh, because they think differently from us, that's the threat. The threat isn't that people are different from you. The threat is that you think it means because they're different from you, they're a threat. Stop hurting people and start with yourself because it's the only person you ever had control over in the first place. All right, guys, that's it. It's past midnight. My bedtime's coming up. Great stream as per usual. I appreciate the conversation we had earlier. That was really great. Um, Z, this was... Oh, Fabulous. Give me 14 of them. I just loved it. It was so good. It was so good. Shout out to Z. Life is a fool.